Carolina Panthers 2025 three-round NFL mock draft. We're going to get into it here today. I know it's really early. The 2024 NFL season hasn't even started yet, so a lot is going to change. But I wanted to take a look at some of the teams that are lowest in Super Bowl odds, and the Panthers currently are the lowest team when it comes to Super Bowl odds for the 2024 NFL season. They're a team that I like the direction they're heading in. I like a lot of the moves they made this offseason. We're going to dive into it here today, and we're going to dive into a three-round mock draft to kind of give fans an idea of how things could go if, in fact, the Panthers do finish close to the bottom uh, of the rankings in the NFL in 2024, which even though I like the direction, I still do think there's a good chance the Panthers are towards the bottom of the league, but they are last when it comes to Super Bowl odds. That's why we're starting with them here today. It's going to give you an idea about some of the prospects, uh, some of the potential for the Panthers moving beyond the 2024 season. And I think even the most optimistic of Panthers fans aren't expecting some big playoff run, uh, push for winning games in the playoffs. This is a rebuild, right? New head coach. You've got a quarterback going into his second year. There's a lot of newness here and a lot of uh, change, right? Heading into the 2024 season, I think the Panthers are trying to set that foundation. So we'll got, dive into it here today. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing. You can also hit that like button here on Rogue Football. I am your host, Jordan DeLugo. So as I mentioned, I like the direction of the Carolina Panthers. I really like Dave Canales. I think this is a smart guy. I think he's a good leader. I think he knows how to communicate and teach effectively with his roster. I think he's done a great job with the quarterbacks he's worked with over the last few years, talking about, obviously, in Seattle, got the most out of Geno Smith. Then you go down to Tampa, offensive coordinator there, and you get the most out of Baker Mayfield. Two guys that before he was working with them, they were kind of viewed as, you know, maybe they're on the downside of their NFL career. And then they had resurgent seasons with Dave Canales. And I think Dave Canales obviously doesn't have the receiving talent right now in Carolina that he did in Tampa and Seattle. But I think he's a really good leader, good offensive mind, can teach well, and is going to do a good job as the Carolina Panthers head coach. I think he's going to stick around there for the long haul. Uh, I think Dan Morgan as the GM, you know, a former Carolina Panthers player, he's doing a good job. It's still TBD overall how good of a job he ends up doing. But I like the direction that, that, that he's, he's gone in a lot of situations so far. Upgrading the interior of the offensive line I think is huge for a quarterback like Bryce Young, a smaller quarterback, right? Uh, up Graded at receiver throughout the offseason as well, bringing in Xavier Leggett in the draft, trading for Deontay Johnson. So I think that there are some some building blocks here. I think you're moving in the right direction in a lot of places, but I still think this roster is a little bit a little bit further away than maybe some Panthers fans would like. I do really still think Bryce Young, if you can get him in more of a spread offense, let him play point guard out there a little bit, uh, get him some dudes to throw to, who, again, you've, you've added Deontay Johnson and Xavier Leggett. Johnson might not be a long-term piece. Thielen is up there in age. You did add Leggett. You also added Jatavion Sanders in the draft, a receiving option at tight end. But I still think Bryce Young can have a very bright future in Carolina with Dave Canales as his head coach and an offensive coordinator de facto. And then you also talk about Ajero Evero, right? I think that one of the more underrated moves of the offseason was the Panthers saying, Evero's not going anywhere. Unless you're hiring, hiring him to be your head coach, you are not poaching him as our defensive coordinator. He's going to stick around here in Carolina. And I think that was smart. I think Evero is an up-and-coming coach. I do think he will be a head coach in the NFL. Extremely smart. I think he did some good things down the stretch. Uh, you have some building blocks on defense. Hopefully J.C. Horn can stay more healthy than he has been. Derek Brown, a fantastic player. You did trade away Brian Burns. Uh, I think hindsight being what it is, you would have obviously liked to take some trades for him earlier on in the process where potentially you could have got two first-round picks or at least one first-round pick. You end up not getting that. But you move on from Brian Burns. Now you have some questions at edge long term. You did bring in Jadavion Clowney. But overall, I think that the the edge room needs some work. I think that you could use more receivers for the long haul. I think corner, you brought in Dane Jackson. Again, you have J.C. Horn. You could potentially upgrade there. There's a lot of areas of the roster that, that could continue to see growth. I really do believe that. And now getting into this three-round mock draft, the Panthers, as it currently stands, based on 
the Super Bowl odds. You get the first pick, right? You have the 50th pick from the Rams, and you have pick 65 um, in the third round. So that's three picks in the first three rounds and the first overall pick. That's massive. That first overall pick is such a bargaining chip for the Panthers. And this is a team that traded up for Bryce Young. Could they now be a team that trade down if they end up with the first overall pick in 2025 and get a King's ransom from other some other quarterback needy team that's looking to move up for their quarterback, whether it's Carson Beck or someone else? If I'm a Panthers fan, I like that option a lot. I like the idea of maybe trading down with a Las Vegas who, yeah, they have Aiden O'Connell, they signed Gardner Minshew. Neither of those guys is the long-term answer for the Las Vegas Raiders at quarterback. Could you trade down with the Raiders, who are currently slotted in at 7? You land the 7th overall pick, the 39th overall pick, so then you have two second-round picks, and a 2026 first-round pick. I like that a lot. I like that. You you trade down six spots, you land another first-rounder, for 2025, 2026, excuse me, and a second rounder. And you still get to pick at number seven overall. And you land, how about a Travis Hunter? Uh, this is a player that doesn't have the greatest size. So you, you could see some teams having a knock on that. You could also see some teams, while well, I think it's an amazing benefit that Travis Hunter can play wide receiver or cornerback at the NFL level and be a blue chip prospect at either position, some teams may have a difficult time parsing that out. And you've also got the fact that there's going to be edge rushers at the top of the draft like James Pierce. There's going to be teams that are quarterback needy. There's also going to be offensive tackles potentially and Will Campbell, some other guys that could be in that top five range as well. I think there's a possibility that Travis Hunter falls to this range. And then after you after you get to seven and you, you see Travis Hunter's on the board, you do need to have a plan. Right, You can't just say, let's take Travis Hunter and figure it out. I think you need to have a cohesive plan for how you're going to deploy him on your football team. And the good thing for the Panthers here is, could they, get, could they use help at corner? Yes. Could they use help at receiver? Yes. So either way, whatever their plan is, I think that Travis Hunter fits what they need and is a blue chip type of prospect, unbelievable Uh, In terms of as a corner, his route recognition, his ability to understand what receivers and offenses are trying to do to attack him, partially because he plays receiver as well, I think is unparalleled. And he's got tremendous hands. He is a threat to force turnovers every time he's out there on the field. And then as a receiver, unbelievable route runner, unbelievably gifted going up and getting the football I think either way, you can't go wrong with Travis Hunter, but I would say whichever team brings him in should have a specific plan. And so maybe the Panthers' plan could be, well, he's going to be a starting corner for us, but we're going to have packages to get him the ball or to feature him on offense or at least use him as a decoy. I think that could work out really well for an NFL team, and I think the Panthers would be wise to land him if they were able to trade down in this scenario. And we also have the 39th overall pick from the trade down with the Las Vegas Raiders. How about taking an edge rusher? You know, Brian Burns is gone, as I mentioned. I think you could use some more edge help. Jadavion Clowney is a short-term answer at this point uh, at best. So how about going and getting Patrick Payton out of Florida State? He is big, athletic, long. He's productive, had a big-time year for them in 2023, was part of one of the most dangerous pass rush duos in the country with Jared Verse and one of the best defensive fronts in the country. You add more strength to his frame, uh, which there's clearly – he has the frame to add more strength, right? He's six foot five, 239 pounds. You can see that there can be more mu- muscle mass added to his frame. There's no question about that. You have a potential Pro Bowl caliber player with his athleticism. He's smart reading the run game as well for such a young player, inexperienced player. He covers so much ground and space. You know, if he can take a step forward, he might not be there at 39, even though this is a, a very good edge class. There's a chance Patrick Payton, if he takes a step forward, in 2024 will not be available for the Panthers here. But in this scenario, based on where he currently is at in his development, I've got him going 39 to the Panthers. I like the athleticism. I like the versatility that he adds to the defense. And again, somebody who can play the run, 
is already a very good pass rusher with his physical tools, can develop more of that pass rush repertoire, the counters, but it's all there for Patrick Payton to become a very good NFL edge rusher. Uh, so I like the upside there at 39. Then at 50, we get an edge defensive line, versatile guy, Ashton Gelati out of Louisville. He is stout. He's physical, he's explosive, extremely productive, versatile player that can align across the defensive front, 275 pounds. I think he has adequate, not great length, but he knows how to use and weaponize his hands. He knows how to read what the tackle's trying to do, and he could take advantage winning on the outside arc or winning through the tackle or getting inside, right? And he's got a variety of hand moves, very advanced with his hands. I think that Ashton Gelati is the type of guy that's going to make an immediate and long-term impact in the NFL and be a plus starter for a long time. And I like the combination of Patrick Payton and Ashton Gelati to go with Derek Brown and some of the other guys you have. You're now building a very versatile and talented defensive front and two guys that can really help Derek Brown uh, out on, on, on that defensive line for the Carolina Panthers. And then at 65... The final pick here in this three-round mock draft for the Panthers. I mentioned Travis Hunter. You probably go corner and have him in in certain packages as a receiver, as an offensive weapon. How about adding another offensive weapon, another versatile receiver for Bryce Young? I mentioned you want to play this spread offense. You want to let him be point guard. How about going and getting Tez Johnson out of Oregon, who is small? He is absolutely small. This guy is always open. He does not drop the football at a high clip, makes people miss in space. I just love the game that he has. Every time you would pop on Bo Nix or or Troy Franklin or any of the other um, Oregon offensive players, Jackson Powers Johnson, you saw this guy pop. He is explosive, quick. He's a natural separator, start and stop ability, the throttle up and down, the uh, yak, the yak ability he has is game changing. He can change direction in a flash. He can run past you. He's tougher than than he looks. He's tougher than his size would indicate. Plays tougher. He's different. He's a different type of cat, and I think he has the potential to be one of these mold-breaking smaller receivers like a Tank Dell. I think he's an even better athlete than Tank Dell potentially. So I would love this haul. You're adding, again, you have to have a plan with Travis Hunter. I'm saying right now the plan is to play him at corner get him on offense a little bit. You don't want to have him playing both sides full time. Like I know he's doing it in college at an extremely high level. His head coach did the same thing. I don't think you want that in the NFL, but I also don't think you want to completely take away either side of the ball. And so I think projecting him at corner and then getting him some reps on offense as well is probably the right way to go with him. So you have Tez Johnson you're pairing him up with. Now you have a blue chip corner in Travis Hunter, someone who can also be an offensive weapon. You have a receiver in Tez Johnson who can get open at an extremely high clip, probably aligning more from the slot. You want to move him around the formation. I don't think you want him lining up against press coverage early in his career. He can be a second, third option in the passing game. You have Deontay Johnson for the next couple years at least. Adam Thielen, we'll see how long he sticks around, but a guy who can still play football. And, of course, Xavier Leggett, if he's able to uh, show some of the potential that he did at South Carolina this year, you could be really cooking and having, again, Jatavion Sanders as well, an offense around Bryce Young that really, really highlights his skill set. And, again, you upgraded that interior of the offensive line already, so he's going to have better protection. I think you're going to run the football better with Jonathan Brooks when he gets healthy. So I would really like this direction if I was the Carolina Panthers. Uh, these videos, I know it's early for an, a mock draft for 2025, but I'm trying to be informative, give fans a look at what could happen, how things could shake out down the road. If you are a Panthers fan or an NFL draft fan, please let me know what you think in the comment section below. You can also like and subscribe. Y'all have a good one.